from LA Late Headquarters in Santa Monica, this is Afternoons LA Late. More corporate earnings come in minutes ago, and there were some misses, but more beats suddenly. Are the markets turning the other course and improving? With some indications, the markets are up 12% across the board tomorrow. The latest later numbers are released before sunrise, and I'll have the predictions today. 260,000, but could be actually worse. Plus, we'll see the softening of the labor market. Good news for you is that inflation still high. We'll go over the raise of your benefits and why that's happening. But we'll also get the indication of what's coming in from Wall Street minutes ago, and lots of major developing details. Plus, what we see in the housing market to the soften, will it soften in later style upcoming thereafter. That's why you have to get a four stimulus chunk in every U.S. state. Go into this video and become a member because over this big broadcast, we're going to go over those huge checks done by executive action of Joseph Biden back in the month of March, and you qualify. It's about $100,000, a series of different checks, executive action, federal stimulus done in the month of March, and you're going to get them. In the second half of this video, we're going to go over those incredible checks, become a member, and stay the big second half as we go over these huge checks across the board. But today, we have a lot of major breaking details to go over with those corporate earnings coming in with major beats and then also a lot of confusing details as well. We'll be looking at the data. One of the big analysts on Wall Street says, look at the data, don't look at the analysis. He's right. The federal governors, Fed governors, were speaking today. We call this Fed speak. And he said, just ignore their Fed speak because it's actually not really accurate. So focus on more of the data. And that's what we're doing today. We have a lot of major data points coming in just minutes ago with... Corporate earnings coming in with CBS and also Moderna, both meet, beating on top and bottom. Starbucks beating as well. Then PayPal delivering massive numbers, a massive niche, match, massive miss for match. Match miss. Yeah, there we go. Stocks are falling or rising in the third quarter. We'll have analysis from the analysts today why they think it's going to get weaker or get better. Then we have the Fed speak from Bullard and Daly, those Fed governors just minutes ago, and whether you should discount it or not. Plus, more oil is being pumped out. We have the latest details coming in from OPEX. This is all breaking news today. The bond yields are up, and then Robinhood announces a major layoff of its workforce. We'll have the latest details today on this big broadcast. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, we got a big show today. We're going to go over the economy, the recession, your inflation, benefit reasons your housing market, and of course, your unemployment and your stimulus. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, let's get to the breaking news. It starts right here, right now, on LL8. LL8. And good afternoon, everybody. Big day and a lot of major breaking details coming in minutes ago. I'll have them more for you in this recording. We have corporate earnings coming in major minutes ago, and they were all generally beats with exception of match, which was a miss. Then we have the latest details on what to expect tomorrow and also on Friday as labor numbers come in on Friday. And also tomorrow, what numbers we should see. Then we'll be going over your benefit raises. Why are your benefits going up so much? And has inflation gone down or not? All the latest breaking news across the board, plus the housing market, what to know and what to see. And of course, we'll be going over those four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. It's a big broadcast today. I'm excited you're here. Thank you for joining me on another LA broadcast. But today we start, of course, with those earnings numbers. Those earnings numbers are really quite shocking because it gives us guidance on where this economy is and where it's going before the announcement comes somewhere else. We'll have the latest details and we're going to go over them starting right now. How are you? I hope you had a beautiful day. It is a gorgeous day here along the coast in Santa Monica, California. Earnings beats came in today when CVS Health reported corporate earnings beating on top and bottom revenue and net profit, and the stock was up 5%. Moderna, the vaccine company, beat on top and bottom. Their stock popped up 15% as well. 
then major miss for match the dating side no one's dating the stock today <clears throat> they were divorcing the stock because guess what it fell 23 percent. it feels like a real bad breakup um yeah it just feels like a really bad breakup so it was not a match for match today it unmatched today because the stock was down 23 percent. now later in this recording we're going to go over the importance of this because this is very important this is very important are we out of a bull mark out of a bear market and back into a bull market or are we just taking a reprieve before this bear market continues? This is important. It's so important because it concerns your money. And we'll have that later in this recording. Meantime, a major story that we were watching all last week. It came in minutes ago. OPEC Plus. Are they increasing gasoline or not? Yes, they are. OPEC Plus announced minutes ago they're increasing capacity for gasoline. This is big because guess what? More gasoline means that then price will come down across the board we'll have the latest details on that in just a second but first let's start with those fed governors we need a laugh don't we <laughs> we went and laugh a fed governor and another fed governor walk into a bar it always it feels like it always starts that way yeah so here are the two fed governors boulard my favorite sarcastic uh the st louis fed governor said no recession inflation's coming down and there will be more hikes we're going to see more convincing evidence across the board headline and other measures that core inflation is coming down before you're going to feel it it's going to be you're not going to worry about your job then president out of san francisco mary daly said that more inflationary spikes are going to come from that interest more infl uh, interest rate spikes are coming from the federal reserve here's the analysis when we see a nice surprise like this where you get ready to adjust your thinking that's why i think the market is taking off says kim forrest founder of bohack capital partners just more information is tell us maybe more things aren't as bad as we forecast do i agree with her well first let me read for you art hogan's quote you know it's art hogan you know it's a great quote here we go he says uh, it's a parade of fed speakers <laughs> wave at the fed speakers <laughs> <laughs> it's a parade. Are you going to celebrate this parade? Of course not. He says, I think that investors have paid more attention to what the data is telling us than what every individual speaker says during their parade, whether they vote or not. It tells us what our expectations should be. I love it again. Another great Art Hogan quote. He's right on the money. This is all what we talked about yesterday. And before Art, was Art watching me? Because yesterday I said the importance of focusing on data, not focusing on analysis. Because the economy is manifesting itself in data, and the analysis will follow if we all agree upon the data, but Wall Street is not. And that's why that quote is so important for Art Hogan. Tomorrow we have those labor numbers coming in, and those labor numbers may mirror what we saw minutes ago. The ISM Non-Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index was released minutes ago, and it showed a slight rebound, showing that non-manufacturing purchases actually went up slightly and relatively nicely in the month of June. But here's the major story. The major story we were waiting for today came in just minutes ago. We've been talking about this all this week. It was Wednesday. You know what the Wednesday story was. OPEC Plus. That consortium of countries that determined the production of gasoline, and they met. And what did they discuss? They discussed production, and they agreed to increase a small amount, 100,000 barrels per day, which is viewed as a minuscule raise. They did that because Joe Biden asked for a raise when he went to Saudi Arabia. They consider this sort of an insult to the President of the United States. So they did not raise much gasoline. But the good news is that they are raising gasoline because of themselves, not because of what Joe Biden asked. A new report from John Kittikoff of Agam Partners says that there may be less demand for oil and more production. Production. The Saudis are actually pumping at the highest level since March 2020. I like this quote. We didn't know this. Over 11 million barrels a day. Folks, there you go. The U.S.'s policy for reducing gasoline at the pump is not working because it's over. The U.S. strategic reserves of 1 million barrels a day is over. Six months, and that never worked. But we now know from this great quote, fascinating detail from John Kirov of Agam Capital, is that the Saudis are pumping gas at the highest production since the pandemic, March 2020, 11 billion bar million barrels a day. And that is why overproduction and less demand is happening. And that's why the price of gasoline is dropping. Interesting. Well, it could impact your inflation. It could impact your inflation. Because remember, inflation has not yet peaked, and we hadn't seen that inflation peaked as of last Friday. Last Friday, the PCE, the PCE, the big number that determines uh, purchasing 
uh, expen core expenditure was released, and guess what happened with that PCE? It showed that inflation had not peaked, and what happened? Inflation went higher, the highest numbers we've seen since the 1980s with that PCE last Friday. In less than eight days from now, we're going to hear the latest details on that CPI for the month of July. Back on July 13th, we had the data that came in for the month of June. And what do we see then? We saw the inflation has not peaked. The June number, well, let's watch what happened. That June number was a major lift, expected to be an 8.8 .8 print. What happened? May was 8.6. June came in at a whopping 9.1%, highest level since we saw in the 1980s. In fact, that's the highest level since 1981. That was July 13th. On July 14th, the, CP, the PPI was released. That's the producer price index, how much the wholesale is paying for goods. And that showed inflation rose dramatically to the second highest recorded on history, 11.3 off of the record of 11.6. Then the day after that, July 15th, the retail sales numbers were released. So what do we know today when we're looking at inflation and looking at your benefits? First, your benefits are going up a lot. But first, let me analyze the inflation, and this is really breaking news right now. You and I know over the last three months we've been talking about, or last two months, I guess you'd say, talking about watching this data inflation because your benefits are going up a lot, huge amount of money, huge amount of money. Your benefits are going up a lot if inflation is not peaked. At the time of this recording today, inflation is not peaked, but now we're going to start to see some rumbling, some chatter that maybe the inflationary numbers coming in in about eight days from now may show that inflation has peaked. Let me give you the analysis, and let me give you the data. The data is that inflation has not yet peaked, because the PCE last, last Friday, personal consumption expenditure, was highest we've seen since the 1980s and was straight up. Number two, the CPI is generally mirroring the PCE, and that comes on August 10th. So we're no less than, what, seven days away? And that CPI is likely to be higher, but if gasoline is coming down because there's less demand and there's more production of gasoline, could the inflation have peaked? There's no data that shows yet it has. That's why the next few days on this channel is so important. Now let's go over to your benefits. Your benefits are going up a lot if inflation remains where it is. Remember that the benefit of that CPI is your benefits going up. Let's go over how your benefits go up starting right now. Your benefits are going up based upon the events of what's happening left and right. And what's at issue? Well, about $5,000. And it's huge. Biggest lift of a generation. Absolutely incredible. Who is this for? You, SSI, SSDI, Social Security, Rail Benefits, Veterans Benefits, and more. We'll go over the calculation. We'll go over the how in just a second. But first, let's go over what's at issue. Three months and three months of data. Let's go over what's happening. Your benefits are tied to something called COLA, C-O-L-A, Cost of Living Adjustment, and that's released once a year, but it's determined by another number. The CPI-W released for three consecutive months. They determine the COLA for the entire year. And those only three months that determine the COLA are the July CPI-W, the August CPI-W, and the September CPI-W. The July number will be released on August 10th. The next number is released at 30 days thereafter and 30 days thereafter. And so far at the time of today's recording, the last print we have inflation was last Friday, that PCE, which was really high. Now, certainly we understand that gasoline production is up and consumption's down. Certainly we see that the production on the non-manufacturing purchasing managers, the ICM released today, was slightly up. And then we have the bond yields released minutes ago that are at a high of 2.81% 10 year yield, suggesting that they're still going up a lot. Confusing data? Yeah, that's why we have to do the following. We have to watch three months of that CPI W, first one being released on August 10th to give us a sense of how much your benefits are going up. They're going up an astronomical amount. The question is how much of an astronomical amount? Let's go over the calculation starting right now. First for you, yes, for you. If you're on SSI, SSDI, Social Security, Railroad Benefits, and Veterans Benefits. Number two, is it automatic? It is automatic. Same amount for everyone? No. Some of you will have more than 5,000. Some of you have less than 5,000. Some of you have exactly 5,000. And then finally, the same percentage? Absolutely. Everyone will have that same percentage across the board. So, 
we need to watch the July, August, and September CPI-W released. And if that number stays where it was for the month of June or higher, your benefits are going up the largest of a generation. Before we see that data, we see tomorrow's data, which is unemployment. And unemployment is expected to soften. 260,000 new jobless claims? Yes, that's what I'm projecting. We had data last week that showed that the labor market was softening, and we had the JOLTS, the G-O-L-T-S, released yesterday on this channel during prime time that suggests the labor market is softening. What's done with what's happened with this number? This number has surged dramatically in just a short period of time. What's gone on? Well, this number was at 144 in the month of April, then went to 200, 230, 250, and then to 260 two weeks ago before it softened up to 255. This, my friends, is why you have to get a forcible check in every U.S. state. Tomorrow morning, live on air. On mornings at 8 at 9 a.m., I'll have the latest details on that labor. My projection, 260,000 new jobless claims. Now, we also understand that the Fed governors are not focusing on labor, even though they're supposed to. The Federal Reserve has a dual mandate. Maximum employment, yes, <laughs> and price stability. They're only doing the second when they're not focusing on the labor. They actually admit that across the board. When they don't, they say that labor is really strong. It's not strong. 260,000 new jobless claims, the worst number of 2022. Now, the other number that comes out on Friday is a number that's really ripe for manipulation. Last time it was released the prior month, the President of the United States really manipulated the number. It's the non-farm payroll jobs number. How many private sector jobs are created? It's a number that has a lot of interpretations to it, and that's why I'm going to feature on this channel explain to you my analysis what happens. But the Thursday number doesn't. The Thursday number doesn't across the board. That's why I have to get that for someone's check in every USA, and we're going to go over those checks in just a second. So here we have the earnings across the board beating generally today. Does that give us indication of where this market's going? Are we really in a recession? Or are we out of the recession? What have we learned about those interest rates across the board? Let me tell you what's going on right now. This is breaking news. It's so hideously important today for you and your money. And I saw it percolate on Sunday when I first started featuring on this channel. Today, it's out of control. It's as though people watch the channel and then they went back and ran a quote based upon what I was reporting on Sunday. Let me tell you what's going on. In June, when we saw Walmart stores have less employees at the checkout, I asked you, do you see less employees at the checkout? You said, absolutely. There's less employees in the store. I said the same thing for Target, absolutely. At the same time, Walmart and Target guided down for the rest of this year. We understood that retail was not particularly doing well at the time. We understood that there was layoffs coming as Tesla, Coinbase, Netflix, and others were announcing major layoffs. Minutes ago, Robinhood, the, the, the trading app, announced layoffs as well. So we understood that labor was softening, and the market, the stock market, went to this really bad low in June. Bear market declared, and more stocks imploded really dramatically across the board. If you missed Sunday's recording last week, and I explained that if what you've seen in a very short period of time is that the market has really rallied in just less than two weeks from late July to about now astronomically straight up astronomically straight up. The NASDAQ is up 17% since just the late July. I mean, that's just 14 days ago. Up 12, 14, 15% in just a few days. Let me tell you why this is so critical for you and why it's so important to understand the differing analysis. First, this is factual as we see stocks straight up, but the analysis is complete, completely contradictory, and I'll give you my analysis after that. And of course, ICI's Julian Manuel thinks that we are not at the bottom. We have not entered the bear market. That this is just a reprieve, just a temporary break when we go back up. The falling yield story has likely run its course, and that too is a headwind for stocks. For, but the options market is telling you that people have, aren't really concerned about too much. And that, to us, is more typical of a late cycle August coming into September, which tends to be a very dangerous type of behavior. Versus, that's one comment, let's see the opposite comment. This one came in from Ned Davis Research that says chances that the June numbers, the lows of June numbers, were the end of the bear market and the start of a new bull market are very high because the S&P is now up. 12% since that date, and I just told you the Nasdaq's up 17%.
Is it going to get better in this third quarter of this year, which we're in right now, in the fourth quarter, or worse? Here we go. Here's another analysis. U.S. equity strategist Lloyd Cavazzini wrote minutes ago, the good news for the U.S. equity and Wall Street market is evidence of resilience continues to be seen in the corporate earnings. She's basically saying some corporate earnings have been relatively good. The bad news for U.S. equity markets is the possibility of further downward earnings. Revisions remains a weak and remains a deep risk as we get deeper in the second half of this year. So she says it could get much worse. There's been a support of the stock prices over the next last few weeks, but going forward also tells us that the rally in stocks is fragile, given the possibility of further downward earnings revisions as 2023 comes into view. Wow. Financial Cliff, I think her quote is probably the best financial cliff quote we've had in a while. Financial cliff involves when people think that everything is wonderful and that you should just absolutely go out and buy every stock, go out and buy every crypto, go out and buy a home, go out and buy a car, because it was just a, it was just a bad month of June. We're gone for the month of June. That's the, that's the rose-colored glasses analysis. Her commentary is that we got to be careful. You got to see what's coming. Who said that to you all last weekend? I did. You got to see what's coming. And we need to see more forward guidance on corporations. Corporations are the best forward guidance we have because they guide us downward, downward guidance for third quarter, which we're in right now, fourth quarter, then you and I know that the second half of this year is actually going to be worse, not better. Walmart gave us guidance downward. Apple gave us guidance downward. And yet people are acting like it's straight up celebrations. Here we come. I'll have more about this in the big second half, but my friends, this is why you have to get a force stimulus check in every U.S. state. The reason why is because too many people think great things are here to stay, and it's not going to necessarily definitively pan out that way. You got to get that force stimulus check in every U.S. state because this is the big sums of money. Let's go over these incredible checks starting right now and what you need to know and what you need to do. These incredible force stimulus checks became law in the month of March, and they're huge. How much? About $100,000. Single individual, $75,000 less. Go get it. This was done by executive actions of Joseph Biden in the month of March. You qualify. Again, single individual, $75,000 less. Go get it. Married couple, $150,000 less. Go get it. If you rent, if you own, if you're on benefits, if you're not on benefits, go get it as well. Get that financial freedom. How do you do it? You become a member. Welcome to all the new members. Go under this video and join this channel and stay the second half as we go over these incredible checks one at a time. You deserve these big checks. They're the only checks there are, and viewers have been getting them daily on this channel. Become a member, and the big second half will go over those incredible checks one at a time. One of the benefits of becoming a member, in addition to the newsletter, is what's in the newsletter, the worksheets. And the worksheets is, again, something created just for membership by LLH. It doesn't exist anywhere else. And you go down to the third line of the membership newsletter, and there is the worksheets. I have it in front of me printed out right now. It's a PDF. It's about eight pages in length, and we have a lot of go over those worksheets starting right now. First, the economy. The first line, inflation. Well, there we go. Data analysis. Data. The data shows us inflation has not peaked, has not settled down. It's still going straight up. That data was the PCE last released last Friday. The next data we'll have is the CPI released around August 10th, the, C, the PPI released around August 11th, and the retail sales released around August 12th. Remember, we need to have two more months of the sustained uh, inflation where it is right now, because if it is, your benefits are going at the highest of your lifetime. Number two, recession. Are we in a recession? Yes, we're in a recession. And those Fed governors, they have made it very clear that, God, I was going to say something. <laughs> I really bit my tongue because I was really going to say something. The Fed governor from Minneapolis last weekend on Face the Nation was asked about recession. He says, I'm not here to talk about recession. Yeah, you see when someone avoids the subject matter, yeah, that's what's going on. And so Boulard and Daly did the same thing today. They just don't want to talk about recession because they're causing a recession. So are we in a recession? Yes, two negative quarters of GDP growth posted by this U.S. economy already this year. But a recession is not over in a blink of an eye. And Kathy Wood, who, of course, has a major position in Tesla, wanted to tell you that the bear market was over just as soon as it started. Not true. A recession has a long way down. And what analysts were saying today is what you got to remember. In a recession, the market goes down 
50, 40 percent. It's only down 20 percent. And much of it is a back up again. So that's not a recession. Labor, we see that labor number releasing tomorrow. 260,000 new jobless claims is what I'm projecting. And then we have the job creation number, the non-farm payroll number released on Friday. We had the jolts number released yesterday, which is the, the job openings number release, and it showed softening of the labor market. Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, it took a little while, didn't it? It took a little while. I told you in spring of this year, about February, that eventually by sometime in this year that the analysts are going to say, stop listening to the Federal Reserve. Stop listening to the Federal Reserve. Because the Federal Reserve is not believable. Whether it's Art Hogan or this wonderful other analyst, I didn't have her name, I, I didn't have time to write it down. She was great today. She basically said the Fed has gotten wrong all year long, got it wrong all last year. And I, while they're a bunch of smart people, they just get stuff really wrong. And that's the consensus of Wall Street. I, last year, said that inflation was going to come in at 8% by December. Fed said no, 2 to 3%. They said uh, temporary, transitory. I said no, prolonged. So far, I'm two for two. Then they said they're going to get inflation down by raising interest rates. It hasn't worked. And the reason why inflation may come down is not because the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, but because they're saying you're in recession. When they send you in a recession, then there's less demand. And that's what ends inflation. It's not because of them. Of course, they'll probably take credit for it. The Federal Reserve does not mean the month of August. One person asked the question, why do they mean the month of August? Because they work so hard. Because they work so hard, they have to take a month off. I really don't know why they don't mean the month of August. That's the first page of the wonderful LA worksheets. But the second page has a major news story today as well. That second page is the incredible table. And what happened yesterday, if you were in the live chat, you saw it yesterday. Today, of course, is August 3rd. It was August 2nd. One viewer in the live chat, LA Late Live, within hours, 24 hours a day on this channel, said he or she, I can't remember, if, I think it was a she, said she got 14 months of rent paid for this channel. Oh my God, another success story. 14 months of checks. That's 14 checks of rent. Now, if you're watching, you that person sent to me on private message, I want to give you a shout out of your name on camera if you want it as well. It was a great congratulations. I didn't have time to write down the name. It went so quickly on the screen. It was a very, very busy live chat. Plus, my message to you is go get those utilities as well. Now, the other success story is what comes from that second page. Here it is. In addition to that person's story, you know the other one. One viewer got 80 to 100 checks because of these worksheets. What did she do? She first became a member. Second, she took notes on the checks she applied for. And third, she forgot to look at the piece of paper. <laughs> she forgot to look at the piece of paper. So what happened to her? She got that wonderful message from her state of Florida two Thursdays ago. Said, ma'am, you've been approved for your mortgage. You've been approved for check B. Wow, congratulations. She's getting a mortgage paid. She's getting a check B. No, she's getting checks B. How many checks, how many mortgage checks is she getting? She's getting 18 months of checks. My goodness, congratulations. Not, not $10,000. That's tens of thousands of dollars. But the story gets better than that. She also applied for all her utilities. All her utilities. That's about four utilities. And the mortgage, that's five checks per month. And she got 18 months. Yes, she got 18 months of five checks on average a month. My friends, that is 80 checks from this channel approximately by becoming a member. Congratulations to her and congratulations to the viewer who got 14 checks overnight as well. Spelly's another viewer. He's in all the live chats. He got check A and he also got check C and he has a great message for you across the board. His message is stay with it. He applied for check C. They said they didn't, he didn't cross his T and Daz I the way they wanted it. He stayed with it. He did it again, and he got approved. He says, keep on pushing across the board. The next page of the worksheet is the membership benefits. We're going to watch those inflationary numbers coming in less than seven days. It'll give us the first major indication of the first of three months we need to see to determine your lifetime benefit raise. Huge news across the board. Seven st uh, the student loan debt forgiveness is the next page and the price of gasoline. We went a little bit over that gasoline. That is a fascinating news story. We'll have both of those stories on tonight on Evenings LA. For now, what you need to do is become a member. Welcome to the hundreds of new members who joined overnight. Welcome to the existing members who have been with this channel for now 18 months. Welcome to all the members who are existing who also upgraded 
from Purple Hawk to Purple Power, or from Purple Power to Casino VIP. If you just found this channel, this is America's number three most watched financial news channel, America, with the data that doesn't lie and the analysis that's never wrong. Become a member, go under this video, and become a member. In the big second half, we're going to go over these incredible checks you deserve. Plus, we'll be looking at the other breaking news stories because there's a lot today in the big second half. Become a member, and in 60 seconds, we'll be back to go over all those incredible checks from the shores of Santa Monica, California. The news is just getting started, the afternoon's just getting started, and I'll see you back in 60 seconds as Afternoon's LA continues. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. Home LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. And this big week of big new news continues tonight on Evenings LA. I look forward to seeing you at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And jump in the live show airing currently on this channel if you're not watching it today. We have a lot to go over, and the second half of this video, we're going to go over those big checks as well. So much going over, and so much to know. The breaking news is right here today on Ally, covering your economy, covering your recession, your inflation, and also what's going on in the benefits lift, the housing market, the unemployment, and, of course, your fourth stimulus. And with that, let's go over that fourth stimulus starting right now. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, welcome. And I hope you became a member during the commercial break. Let's go over those incredible checks starting right now. In the much of March, in the month of March, the President of the United States did a series of executive actions. Those executive actions established these checks. Thank goodness, at the same time, viewers said... LLA, can you find me some checks? And I found them, and they're huge. Two focuses by me at the time, it's still my focus today. One, I care about you, so I want to make sure these are big checks. A recession is not two weeks. A recession is not two months. I'm projecting this recession is about two years. So you need big checks to survive this entire recession. Number two, you need broad eligibility so that you qualify, and you do. Approximately $100,000 of checks. And checks for you. Single individual, $75,000 or less, go get them. Married couple, $150,000 or less, go get them. If you rent, if you own, if you're on benefits, if you're not on benefits, go get them as well. And let's go over all those incredible checks, starting right now with the first check. That first check is check A. It's a $6,500 to $12,000 for us to much check in every U.S. state. Single individual, $75,000 or less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less, go get it. If you're on benefits, go get it as well. How do you get it? Step one, go on to this video, become a member. Become a member to LLA. Welcome to all the new members, existing members, and upgraded members across the board. Over 100 joined yesterday. Become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Casino VIP, join on this channel. Number two, go down in the incredible newsletter, Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, to where you find check A. There it is. Click the link. It sends you right into the Nationwide website. And pounds. Apply. You're not going there yet. You're going to go get check B. Check B is what got that one viewer those 80-plus checks. Check A is what got Spelly his checks. These incredible checks for check B are huge. Fifteen to 80000 single individual, 75000 or less. Go get it. Married couple, 150000 or less. Go get it. And if you're on benefits, go get it as well. 
How do you do it? Step one, go onto the video, become a member. Then go down to that membership newsletter you have to find Check B, click the link, and you go in and apply. Look how well we've done so far. That's Check B, 80,000. Check A, about 12,000. That's $100,000 of checks right there. But you're not done there yet. You're going to go get Check C, as Spelly did as well. It's huge, averaging about $45,000. Many of you are getting over $150,000. It's $2,000 a month over 12 months at least. How do you get it? Step one, go into this video, become a member. Step two, get that incredible membership newsletter. Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Go down in that newsletter, you find Check C. It tells you who to call, what to say, and how to say it. The success stories of the money on this channel is, rob is robust. Getting people over $50 million since this channel launched in March of 2020. But Check C has been a lot of that money, a lot of that money. And let's look at some of the success stories because Check C started before Third Stimulus and got bigger under Third Stimulus. And that is what this is today, the residue of Third Stimulus. From Nisi, Richard, Nancy, Mark, and Elizabeth, go get some Check C's for rent. Look at those great sums of money. And again, that viewer overnight got 14 months of checks. If you have a success story and it's featured and posted in the live chat right now, whether it's $1 or $100, and also send it to me a private message on Facebook so I can feature it on air. Number two, look at those utilities. Wow, Angela, Mark, Nancy. Mark's brother Law is getting $15,000, and Mark's brother Law is also getting quarter million dollars for SNAP over 10 years. Look at the combinations. Nisi from $23,000 to $50,000. Mark from $32,000 to $166,000. He was at 32, then he went to 50, then he went to 100, then he went to 166. And here's Lorraine. She was at 105, and now she's at 150. Incredible success stories, but a familiar subject among all of them. First, these are big sums of money. Second, the viewers are all listening and learning to earn. So Nisi, Lorraine, Margaret, and Johnny, and Mark are in all the live chats. Because you can't miss anything going on in this economy a single day. We don't have that labor number till tomorrow. We don't have the job numbers until Friday. We don't have the CPI-W until August 10th. So there's so much going on in a single day. Did you see the Jolts number yesterday? You probably missed, if you missed, if you missed the yesterday's recording, I'm not featured again today, not featured again today. Later to, in this recording, we have details on the debt being carried by Americans in their wallets. I'm not going to feature that at all again tomorrow. So you can't miss any of this breaking news because there is so much breaking news on a single ch day of this channel. Number two, keep on getting checks. That's what Margaret and Lorraine and Johnny keep on doing. Margaret had a meeting with her utility company just days ago, got more checks across the board. What do you need to do? Let's recap. Step one, go under this video and join the channel. Step three, step two, Become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power. Did I say that wrong? I said that wrong. Go into this video and join the channel. Become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Casino VIP. Then get that incredible membership newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Center. Also, subscribe. Go under the video, hit that subscribe button. Go to the front of this video and make sure you hit the notifications to all on. There's a little bell. Make sure you hit that bell to all notifications on. You're watching... LA Light, the number three most watched financial news channel in America, expanding dramatically to number two. Have you seen all the changes? There's a lot, and there's a lot more coming still. First, LA Light Live, the hit show of this channel, is now 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The feed is being updated all throughout the day, so jump in throughout the day and see the latest breaking news. Number two, LALight.com, the online print website that started all 20 years ago, has been relaunched to feature the latest details on your money. Number three, LLA2 and LA3 are the brand new two additional channels coming to this family in just days from now. So excited to have you along for the ride. Welcome to all the new members. Welcome to all the returning members. And welcome to the members who've upgraded as well overnight. Now, let's go over to the other major breaking stories we're working on right now. And we'll learn more about tonight on Eating's LA. A lot of major news and a lot to know across the board. The details start tomorrow. When the jobless numbers are released, we're looking for 260, 260,000 new jobless claims. Then we have the Friday non-farm payroll number release. We'll have the latest details on that. We've had no indication that inflation has peaked yet, but we do have the falling prices of gasoline. And today we have new indication why the price of gasoline may be falling as well. Is inflation falling as additionally? Are we out of a bear market? A lot of confusing data points. Let me explain the latest details today on L8 starting right now. First, 
This is one of the most important stories you need to know today. It's whether we are done with the bull bear market and back into a bull market, or whether we're just taking a temporary, uh, temporary break for the bear market and we'll be resuming it in just a few days. Why is this so important? First, Wall Street's behavior is what gauges consumer confidence. You may not own any stocks. You may not know anyone who owns own any stocks. You may not understand the stock market. But if the stock market crashed 2,000 points today, you would hear it. You would know it. And you would say, there's a problem. That's the way this economy works. Everyone knows stock market up looks good. Everyone knows stock market goes down looks bad. And when things are bow down bad, then they sense there's something wrong going on with the money around them. So, for you to understand generally what's going on with the up and down the bear of the market is very, very critical. And let's go back to the analysis right now. The analysis has two different camps. One camp saying, we're done with the bear market, we're in a bull market. The other camp saying, you know what, we're just taking a little break. Here's what I want you to know. This is my analysis, and you can disagree. My analysis is that some analysts, some Wall Street, some Wall Street analysts, is ta are taking the behavior of traders or the behavior of, of stocks as the indicative nature of the economy when it's the reverse. The economy dictates what should go on with stocks, not the stocks determine what goes on with the economy. Let me give you an example. Let's take a particular stock, stock A, and let's say it misses in its corporate earnings on top revenue and on bottom earnings. It misses on revenue, misses on earnings for second quarter just released this week. That's the example. And yet the stock is through the roof, straight up, $200 today. Well, the data told you it was bad numbers. The data told you the recession, the inflation hurt the company in revenue and income. And revenue and, and, and net income. Well, here's the problem, is that some analysts are looking at the behavior of the stock up as the indication of the health of the company. No, the indication of the health of the company is its corporate earnings. The corporate earnings just tells you the health of the company. If the company also gives you guidance downward, downward for the rest of this year, saying they believe the third quarter, which currently is gonna hurt their business, they don't see as much profitability like last year. Fourth quarter, they expect a downward guidance as well. And then the stock goes up another 300 points. What Wall Street analysts or some of them are saying, hey, good times are here to stay. Because look, the stocks have been able to rub off the bad news of the recession the, and the inflation, and they're going right up. No, the companies have not worn off the bad news if they miss on top and bottom. Here's what's going on. Analysts are using movements of stocks as indication of the health of the companies. That's not the indication of the health of companies. The movement of the stocks is the sentiment of the traders or investors. That's not the health of the companies. The health of the companies is what determines your financial future. Because if companies are not in a healthful situa healthful situa healthy situation, you know what happens. They lay people off. And if they lay people off, then that doesn't help your town. Because suddenly people are on, on unemployment that weren't across the board. That is why this economy is confusing, but also creating a lot of people on the wrong side of the analysis. So let me give you an example that came in minutes ago, and that analysis was Robinhood. It's an online trading app, and the Robinhood announcement minutes ago was they have a problem with labor. Hence <laughs> the graphic on the screen. They have a problem with labor. They announced that they are cutting their workforce 20 percent because they're having a problem with costs. So they're having a problem making as much money, so they have to lay off 23% of their workforce. And that came after they already cut their workforce 9% in April. That looks horrible. That doesn't look like a very helpful, healthy environment, does it? No. Jump in the live chat. Does that look healthy or not? Healthy or no? If you said no, I agree with you. Well, here was what Wall Street did. They traded up the stock 13%. Okay, and the stock is giving the, the company is giving you guidance that they're not in a healthful cost situation at the moment, and that laying off thirty percent of their workforce in, in three months looks like major trouble. And you're trading up the stock thirteen percent. 
Yeah, that is not where you look at issues across the board. Another indication of where we look at issues across the board is debt. A new report released uh, that indicate, from the New York Federal Reserve indicates that Americans are borrowing more than ever before. Highest mortgage, uh, excuse me, highest credit card balances we have seen in 20 years. Okay, that's data. That's not analysis. Highest credit card balances of, uh, we have seen in 20 years. It jumped 13% compared to the year before. 13% compared to the year before? Yes, it's at $46 billion in just the third three-month period, and non-house housing credit balances increased 2.4% compared to the first quarter. That's just in one quarter went up 3%. A trouble? Yeah, of a capital T. That's the highest gain since 2016. So <laughs> let's go back over that. If credit card debt is at the highest level we've seen in 20 years, and a company is laying off 30% of its workforce, then why would you trade up the stock 13%? Yeah, it doesn't particularly look good. What do I want to tell you? What I've been telling you before. When it comes to uh, when it comes to mutual funds, when it comes to stock, when it comes to uh, uh, stock traders, when it comes to uh, companies that um, have something, uh, some type of vehicle like that, they want you to buy and sell. They make money when you buy a stock or sell the stock. And hence, if you're in a recession, you shouldn't be buying anything because we're in a downward spiral. They don't like that because they don't make money. And so the narrative of buying to buy because this is the bottom is going to be dangerous. It's going to be dangerous. In a recession, you have a long way to trot. You don't have two weeks. A recession, if it began in June, or a bear market, let's use a bear market in this case. If a bear market starts in June, a bear market doesn't end in three weeks. That's pure ridiculousness. No bear market starts in one month and ends in three weeks. It doesn't make sense. A bear market doesn't start in June when the labor when the numbers were bad in April from Walmart and Target continued to be bad in the month of March, April, and May and June. And then we got a confirmation we're already in recession. The bear market doesn't end abruptly. Now, what I need you to know is the following: data controls. It's pure coincidence. It sounds like I staged it, but it's absolutely coincidence that yesterday you and I were chatting in the live in in this broadcast about the importance of putting data first on the channel. I will always put data first before analysis because data doesn't lie. Today we had the Fed governors doing the parade of governors, and what did Art Hogan say? Rely on the data because the analysis is often wrong. The comment by Art Hogan, I think that investors need to pay more attention to what the data is telling them than what every individual Fed speaker is saying, or whether they're a voter or not, what expectations should be. We're done with the parade of Fed speakers. Absolutely. You and I, when we look at the data, we know where we're ahead, and that's why this channel is putting you ahead. Become a member, go on this video, become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Powercast, you know, VIP. We will always put data on top for you. I'll tell you when the data is going to come, what day it's going to come, what you need to see for that data, what the prior read on that data was, what the expectations on the data are for, and whether it be or missed on the data. That's how we are data dependent, and that's how you remain ahead of the game. People who don't analyze, people who only rely upon analysis but don't know the data are in a big trouble. Because the analysis may be wrong across the board. Tonight on Ease LA, we'll be going over more about corporate earnings and looking why corporations have yet to give us big guidance for the end of this year. We need those third quarter and fourth quarter guidances. And we'll be looking forward to tomorrow when we see those unemployment claims. Will we go higher or will we go lower? We'll go over why the housing market continues to soften and why those mortgage rates fell so dramatically last week. Plus, we'll be looking at the latest details on what happened with that gasoline and why that gasoline is critical because guess what? You know what it is. Inflation may peak if that gasoline does stay down because demand of gasoline is coming down and production is up. It all impacts your benefits, and we'll have more about that tonight. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, God bless you. Thank you for joining me on a big day where the breaking news is always here covering your economy, the recession, inflation, 
benefit rises and the housing market. We'll feature more about this tonight on Eni's LA from the shores of Santa Monica, California. God bless. Stay informed, stay focused, whether it's economy, the recession, or inflation. We got it all here. We got the data, and we got the family. Stay informed, stay focused. Don't forget to become a member. Go on this video, become a member. Purple Hawk, Pearl Power Casino VIP. And stay with LA for more.